everybody, welcome back to Camerville. And uh, today we'll be comparing the Laowa 12mm 2.0 aperture lens, the Rokina 14mm 2.0 aperture lens, and also the Blackstone 2.4 aperture lens 15mm. So right before we can start with the image quality test, we need to talk about the construction build of these lenses. The first thing we're going to talk about is the Laowa 12mm 2.0 aperture lens. And right off the bat, this is the most expensive out of the bunch. It's $1,000 and is the most fastest, widest lens on the market. And so if you take a quick look at the aperture, the aperture is pretty nice. It's really, um, it's a little stiff, but that's not too bad. You can change it to the letter A on the lens and you can control the aperture from the camera. And so that's a good thing. Uh, focus ring is not bad. It's pretty smooth. I have no problem with it. Uh, it's, it's slightly stiff, but that's okay. You're using this for landscape photography or architecture photography anyway. So you want that slight precision. You don't want to be too too smooth. You might be moving left and right too fast. So the stiffness is not bad at all. However, here's where I break people's heart. Lens hood is metal. I like that actually. It's full metal. And so when you put this lens hood on your lens, you hear that scratching sound? Yeah, it's actually scratching on the metal. So. If you take off the lens hood, you can see slight scratches on the lens. And so that's a problem I feel like <laughs> because I don't want to be scratching my lens just because I put my lens hood on it. So that's an issue that I have with this lens right at the moment. And also another issue I have with this lens is, um, wow, just the scratchiness is crazy. If you pull on the lens cap, which is right here, you have to make sure that you don't take out the lens hood before the lens cap. For example, right now I'm taking out the lens hood right now, and you're taking out the lens cap with it. It's, it's a weird construction build. So I don't know what they were thinking. It's a little strange to me. I, so basically what you gotta do is, if you wanna take out your lens, oh man, this is so crazy. If you wanna take out your lens hood properly, you need to take out the lens cap first, and then take out the lens hood with it. And, while you're doing that, you have to be extra careful turning it or you'll just scratch up your whole lens. So that's an issue right there that I noticed. And so hopefully you guys are okay with that. Some of you guys might be, oh. So it's up to you guys. Uh, for me, I don't like this design. I like the metal build, but it's, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Let me see. So now I have the cap on. And if you mistakenly try to take out the lens hood without the cap first, this is what happens. You, you just pop it open with the cap. So I don't know what they were thinking. It's kind of weird. It's kind of um, strange for that to happen. But anyways, let's move on with the next lens. The next lens is the IRX 15mm 2.4 aperture lens. So right off the bat, there's no aperture ring on this lens. So you have to change your aperture through the camera. The focus ring is pretty nice and smooth actually. And that's a cool feature to this lens. Once you get your uh, subject in focus, you can lock it up just like this. So it's really hard to um, change your focus at that point. But you could definitely budget just a little bit. You put some force to it, of course, but that's meant for you to lock it so you don't change the focus by accident. Also, if you want to shoot infinity, it's pretty cool because there's actually a clicking mechanism once you hit infinity on this lens. It actually stops right there. It actually lets you know that you are on infinity right now. So that's pretty cool to have. A thing that I don't like about this lens is the way the lens cap is built. And so let me show you guys. Lens cap is cheap, it's scratchable. In two days, it'll be full of scratches. Right now, as you can see, that you can attach the lens cap on the lens. That's pretty cool, right? Unfortunately, if you take out the lens cap in a weird angle, you could definitely scratch the lens by accident. And so that's pretty uh, the downside to this lens. Fortunately, this lens can definitely support a 95 millimeter uh, lens uh, ND filter on it. So that's a good thing. So perhaps you might just have to leave that on so you don't scratch the lens. That's something for you guys to know about. Also, the lens hood is pretty, uh, I don't really like the lens hood on this thing. It's pretty, uh, it's definitely plastic as well. It's very scratchable. Let me show you guys right off the bat. And at the moment, it looks so huge. This is pretty, this is probably the biggest lens out the bunch. And so right now, this is the lens hood on the lens it's pretty huge um it's up to you guys you guys enjoy that i don't like the lens hood made out of plastic it's really cheap i think this is the cheapest lens hood out the bunch so lastly broken off 14 millimeter two point aperture lens this lens have a very clicky aperture ring of course 
And to be quite honest, this is probably the most noisiest one out the bunch. Focus ring is pretty nice. It's very smooth. And the lens hood on the Rokinon, I actually hated the lens on the Rokinon at the beginning because it's actually built on the lens. You cannot remove it. Here's a lens cap for it. And basically, that's very simple. However, after testing the last two lenses out, I actually appreciate this design even more. So today's test, we'll be taking these three lenses on our typical landscape test, architecture test, bokeh test, and definitely we'll try out some astrophotography to see the coma in these lenses. And also we'll investigate the center sharpness, definitely the side edges of the warping, and also definitely there's no distortion that this Lawa actually claims to be. And so with that said, let's get going guys. So right before we get started with this entire review, I want to give you guys a cheat sheet so you guys can follow along and see if I'm correct or not. And basically, I did the entire comparison already. And as you can see, the first row is a Rokinon versus the Lawa. Second row is the IRX versus the Lawa. Third row is a Rokinon versus the IRX. And each column represents the aperture, of course. And so let's take a quick uh, sample test. If you look at the two-point aperture of the Rokinon versus the Lawa, the center focus, the Lawa is a bit sharper than the Rokinon top left corner the Lawa is still sharper than Rokinon and the top right bottom right and the bottom left the Rokinon is sharper than the Lawa in those areas and so that will give you a general idea of what I'm doing and also keep in mind that the IRX if you look at the IRX versus the Lawa the center sharpness is a lot um, sharper just because at 15 millimeter you are actually zooming in just slightly closer so there were some images that I felt like the IRX was just sharp just because it was one millimeter slightly closer. And so hopefully you guys enjoy this um, chart and let's get on with the review. Uh, okay, let's do this. Oh. God, I hate this lens. This lens is already scratched up already. Jesus. I mean, it sounds nice, but man, you're just scratching up your lens. It's crazy. I don't know why they made that uh, design. It's so weird. And finally, we found our first subject. So in taking a look at the center sharpness of the image, as you can see, the black stone is on the left, the low is in the middle, and the Rokina is on the right. The black stone, Irax, is actually a bit sharper than the Lawa. And if you look at the Lawa compared to the Rokinon, I would say that the Lawa is better than Rokinon. And so if we take a look at 5.6, um, the same traits are still there. The Blackstone is a bit sharper than the Lawa, but if you look at the Lawa comparing to the Rokinon, the Lawa is a bit sharper than the Rokinon. And so as we go to F11, as you can see, it still remains the same. The IRX is a bit sharper than the Lawa and the Lawa and the Rokinon seem to actually even out around this point so that's something for you guys to take note of and as we look the next image we are at the top corner of the photo and as you can see at 2.8 aperture the Blackstone is a bit sharper than the Lawa in this area and as you look at the bushes down here definitely the Blackstone is a bit sharper in those areas and if you look at the Lawa versus the Rokinon um, unfortunately the Rokinon doesn't do to a two point in this particular area of the image on top left corner and so you can definitely take a look at the bush it's a bit blurry and as we jack up our aperture at 5.6 you can definitely see that the Blackstone still is strong in this area on top left corner of the image and if you check out the bush um, definitely the Blackstone does do way better than the Lawa. Um, around this area, of La the Lawa versus the Rokinon, things are getting really close, but I gave it to the Lawa just because around this area, as you can see, it gets really blurry. And so that's unfortunate for Rokinon, but it's getting really close at 5.6. Once you do f F11, things are almost there, but the Blackstone is a bit better than the Lawa. And as you look at the Lawa versus the Rokinon, I would have to say it's quite even. It's a it's an argument that you guys could have, but for me, I think it's quite even on the top left corner in this area. And at the top right corner of this image, as you can see, the Blackstone at two point aperture is actually a bit better than the Lawa. 
And as you can see, if you compare the Loud 2.8 versus the Rokinon 2.8, you will notice that the Rokinon actually shows some life and it's actually sharper on the Rokinon on the right side of the lens. And so if we jack up the aperture to 5.6, we could see that the Blackstone is still sharper than the Laowa. And as you look at the Laowa versus the Rokinon, the Rokinon is still sharper at 5.6 than the Laowa. And once we jack up to f11, things do start to look a bit even. But if you look at the Blackstone versus the Laowa, I would have to give it to the Blackstone just because I see a bit more highlights on the leaves than the Laowa. But if you look at the Laowa versus the Rokinon, it's a bit... I know this image is a slightly lighter than this image and I actually prefer the Rokinon but I'll give it an even um, sharpness around this uh, area of the aperture. And as we transition at the bottom left of the image, as you can see the Blackstone is a bit blurry at the bottom of the image as you can see. The Lao does quite better than the Blackstone. However, if you look at the Rokinon 2.8, the Rokinon does way better than all two of those lenses. And so as we jack up the aperture to 5.6, we could definitely see that the Laowa still does better than the Blackstone in this area. And the Rokinon does quite well than all two lenses still. And if we look at f11, things do start to even out just a bit in this area. But if you take a closer look at the Rokinon, I would have to give it to the Rokinon. It's a bit a uh, hair sharper than all two lenses, but that's an argument you guys could have as well. And um, let me give you guys a closer look around the image so you guys can take note and see what you guys think. So lastly, we are at the bottom right corner of the image. And as you can see, the real estate of the Blackstone is quite shorter than the Laowa and the Rokinon. And already right off the bat, you could tell that the blurriness of the bottom right corner of the image, the Blackstone do suffer quite a bit. The Laowa is not bad, so I would give it to the Laowa over the Blackstone. But if you look at Rokinon, the Rokinon doesn't blur as much as these two lenses around the corner, bottom corner of the edges. And so I think the winner around the 2.8 is definitely the Rokinon. And so if you do jack up the aperture at 5.6 and you look closely at the image, definitely the Laowa is a bit more sharper than the Blackstone. And if you look at the Laowa against the Rokinon, the Rokinon is a bit softer than the Laowa. And so if we jack up our aperture to f11, we could definitely see that things do start to even out quite a bit. Um, if you take a closer look, I would say it's really quite even at around this f11. It's hard to say which one is better than one another. And if you look at the Laowa versus the Rokinon, definitely you can already say that Rokinon is slightly brighter than the Laowa. And so for me, I gave these two um, areas even out scores, but it's really up to you guys on how you want to determine which one is better. And even after going through the center of the image, the top left corner of the image, the top right corner of the image, the bottom right, and the bottom left, I just want to point out a special note that I will later explain in a video that the Blackstone do have an issue with its lens hood. And so as you can see, the bottom left corner and the top right corner do have vignetting. And so keep an eye on that because as you jack up your aperture, you'll notice that the vignetting do get stronger as you tune up your aperture. And that's really um, pretty bad actually. So please take a note of that. One thing about the IRX that people are talking about is actually is weather resistant. I don't know how true that is, but I will not dump water on this lens. Whew. It's hard to do a bokeh test when it's too windy. So let's find another spot that's not that windy. I need to find something that doesn't move and that could give me some bokeh. Probably this pole right here. It's full of uh, bird dumpings. I don't like how that cap just pulls in and out like that. It's so easy to like, for it to get loosened. Look at this, it's very easy. Oh, shh. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yes, uh, chances are you're gonna be scratching your lens somehow with this particular design. Cause check this out, you're just plugging in like this. If you miss it, you're definitely scratching the top of the lens. I just saw. <laughs> oh, All right, so. And then if you, if you do this and you wanna take out your lens, 
hood, you need to take out your lens cap first, because if you don't, this happens. Shoot. So, yep, there's a definitely a, there's definitely a lot of scratches on this lens already. Woo wee! See, look how easy this is to come off. I mean, this is so weird. Why would they design it like, oh my god. Okay, well, I mean, let me see. Nope. Yeah, the lens cap on the Lawa tends to be really bad because it just comes off like that. It's really easy. It's like no, no grip at all. You could just have it fall off itself if you want. Even though the IRAX do offer a 2.4 aperture, I'm just going to compare it 2.8 all throughout this test. In terms of bokeh, the Blackstone IRAX and the Rokinon do share similarities in bokeh quality. And as you can see, they are quite similar at 2.8 aperture. And so if we compare the Rokinon to the Lawa, you will notice right off the bat that the Lawa bokeh is not as smooth as the Rokinon. And if you change the Rokinon to F4, they are kind of identical in a way. And so I know it looks a bit brighter in this image. Uh, it was kind of cloudy as well, so clouds were moving. And this particular area right here, that's just a car passing by, so ignore that. But um, but they definitely do share quite a similar bokeh around F4. Blackstone is probably a bit better since it can go up to 2.4, so I will have to give first place to the Blackstone IRX on bokeh. Two should be Rokinon, and three is Alawa. I want to let you guys know I believe that the Rokinon is the lightest one, second heaviest one is the Lawa, and the third heaviest one would be the uh, Blackstone IRX lens. So for you guys that want to know about the weight, I think the IRX is the heaviest one up from the bunch. So there's one additional thing that I just found out about the Blackstone that you guys should definitely know about. It's this lens hood. I don't know what's going on with this lens hood. Basically, this lens hood, if you put it on the wrong way and have the long end of the lens hood to the side, <laughs> so you're definitely going to see the lens hood in your image. So you'll definitely get that like these black bars on the side of your image. If you put on the lens hood properly, as so, and this is the proper way to put it on, I noticed that you're getting like this vignetting on the side from the lens hood. So that's something for you guys to know about. I just found out, I thought I was going crazy. And also shooting without the lens hood on a bright sunny day is probably not a good idea due to lens flare. And the only reason how I found out about the lens hood is because the sun is hitting the lens at a certain direction and the lens hood is blocking it. And so this lens hood is not really that well he made and designed. You guys should watch out for this lens because I thought this lens was going to be really good, but if it's causing that vignetting issue, if it's hitting at a certain angle, that's not good at all to do landscape photography. So right now, I'm taking a picture of this building. The sun is hitting the edge of this building. Hopefully I get some chromatic aberration or, or some color fringing, so let's take a look. And after shooting several buildings on a sunny day, I came to a conclusion that the black stone at 2.8 aperture is probably the best in terms of CA. And so if you look at the CA here, it's very slight. But if you compare this particular image with the Lawa, you can see that there's blue fringing going on right there. And unfortunately for the Rokinon people out there, you see that the blue fringing is even worse on the Rokinon. And so for those people that don't know about the Rokinon, you'll get better CA uh, output around 5.6. With the Lawa is around f4 and the Blackstone is pretty good all around so that's something for you guys to take note of. So when I was comparing the distortion I noticed that the Lawa does a really good job with distortion as you can see and so if you look at the Blackstone it's really subtle in this area with the distortion it's not bad at all however if you go to the Rokinon you can definitely see the distortion in the center it's really noticeable you can tell it right off the bat and so for those people that are shooting architecture, definitely the Lawa might be your best bet. So for those people that love shooting at the sun, this is a sample of a Rokinon at 2.8 aperture and I'm shooting directly at the sun. And as you can see, the flare is right here. And now if I change it to the Lawa, the flare is much more minimal than the Rokinon. But if I change to the Irax at 2.8, this is pretty nice. And so I was really impressed with the Irax at this section of the test. 
And also for those people that are wondering about the real estate game between each focal length and the warping, right now here's an example of a Blackstone RX image. And so at 15 millimeter, you won't get as much warping as you would get from a 14 and 12. And so this will be the least amount of warping from the bunch that you'll be getting. And let me show you guys an example of a 14 millimeter lens. So keep this in mind. And now here is the 14 millimeter. And so even though you do get more real estate in your photo you get more warping with it and so this is something that most people forget about but hopefully you guys keep this in consideration and if you want to see a visual uh, image of the amount of real estate you're getting this is how much you'll be getting if you switch from a 15 to a 14 and that's a pretty big chunk and essentially it comes with warping so that's something to consider about so if you're thinking about 14 to a 12 Right now, if this is a 14, we'll go to a 12. 12 is right here, it's very slight. And as you can see, it comes with warping as well. And so, for those people that wanna go super wide, you'll definitely get even more uh, real estate in your image and also a bit more warping. And so, let me show you guys a visual of the um, real estate you'll be getting from 14 to 12 that much. So this is the last test. The sky is clear. I got all my three lenses. Everything's recharged up. Battery's charged up. Phone's charged up. Check the weather. Clear the skies. We should be good to go. We're driving an hour away. Nothing can stop me now, baby. We got this. Man, the moon is out. I can't do no astrophotography in the moon. Look at this mess. You see this mess? That's the moon up there. Well, that means we ain't gonna get no stars tonight. Because that moon is blocking all the light for the stars to come out. What the heck? I should have checked. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, get a good shot that night, guys. <laughs> and basically, um, the moon was out. I forgot about the moon. My apologies. But this is what I got that night. And we will compare the left side of the image of the sky just to get a, a slight idea of the image quality. And so I'll be comparing this particular area of this image. And as you saw at the beginning of my video, you know that around this area, the top left corner, that's basically where the Lawa and the IRX Blackstone lens kind of shines. And so hopefully we will see that in the test. And so let's take a quick look. So the top row is a Blackstone 10 seconds, Rokinon 10 seconds, Lawa 10 seconds. Bottom one was 30 seconds, of course. And so this is what 10 seconds look like. And so I would suggest you guys um, like come here, take a screenshot, and so uh, this is 10 seconds on a Blackstone. This is broken on at 10 seconds. Do a screenshot right here, guys. And then you do another screenshot right here and you guys do a comparison and perhaps, um, you know, judge for yourself because I can't really judge this image because I like to see the entire image so I can uh, really tell you guys which one is which. But if I would have to choose, it would definitely be the Blackstone just because you get a bit more aperture in your lens and so that's always good when you're doing astrophotography and so right now i'm just thinking that perhaps the lawa might be the sharpest from this area of course but it could be the blackstone i think i'm oh, let me take a quick look this little blue acoma coming out oh wow there's not much coming out here i think the blackstone might be the best bet but hey this is your um your guys' judgment let me know in the comments what you guys think. This is what I got. I apologize again for having a bad astrophotography image for you guys to look at. And so forgive me. So after creating all the data points and going through all the tests with you guys, the sharpness test, the bokeh test, the flare test, so on and so forth, you guys might be wondering which lens is actually the best buy. And so it's really hard for me to tell you guys which one is the best. But I can definitely tell you which one is the best budget lens. That would be the Rokinon 14 mm 2.8 aperture. If you guys are into architecture photography, want to get rid of distortion, definitely the Lawa might be your best bet for that department. 
If you guys are shooting the night skies and you want a bit more aperture in your shots, I would definitely recommend the Blackstone IRX 15mm 2.4 aperture and it definitely it's pretty good for the night sky just because you're dodging the ND filter holder and you're just using the regular 95mm ND filter right here. He also has an infinity focus um, snap so you could definitely focus to infinity and it would just snap onto it and once you get that in place you can lock it in place so it would never move so that's pretty good feature that this lens have. All in all if you do buy this Blackstone, definitely get rid of the lens hood. <laughs> and uh, if, you're, if you do end up buying a Rokinom, you'll definitely have more money to buy more accessories for the ND filter part. If you end up buying the Lawa, you're going to spend a bit more money for accessories as well. And so in those regards, it's really up to you guys. For me, I'm keeping my Rokinom. I just bought the Blackstone and I'm thinking about returning it. The Lao was pretty nice to play with, but I'm thinking about never touching this lens ever again because this thing is, ooh, this thing is really, really annoying. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and I guess I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, take it easy. Peace.